What's going on everyone? While I'm working on my next uh, course, I thought I'd do a tiny little mini free course. If you've ever wanted to set up a chat server for you, yourself, and your friends, I have no friends. XMPP is a great protocol. You might have heard of it. Uh, it's called Jabber, colloquially. So it's basically something like uh, AOL Instant Messenger or IRC, eh, little elements of both. But basically, it's a very common chat protocol, easy to run, widely used, uh, and there's lots of clients that are compatible with it. I'm going to show you how to set up Prosody, which is a Jabber or XMPP server, on a brand new uh, VPS. Just got a little uh, cloud server here, just temporarily for this video. And I'm going to show you how to set it up as a chat server for yourself and your friends. You can even make an open chat server if you want and allow strangers to uh, register and chat with you. We're going to cover basic security things. Uh, we're going to set up SSL or TLS for it. We're even going to have a multi-user chat room, a MUC. We'll talk a little bit about modules that can be used to extend this and add new functionality. And I will show you how to configure a client, in our case, Pigeon, and connect to our server. We're going to do that in about a little more than a half hour. So enjoy. The requirements for this are fairly simple. You need some sort of internet connected server. Um, I've got just a tiny little cloud VPS spun up, you know, five bucks a month. And uh, for the couple hours that I'm doing this video, it'll cost me, you know, 15 cents. Uh, but anything that's internet connected uh, is okay for this. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be using Prosody, I think that's how you pronounce it, Prosody, Prosody, to set up our server. That's the application which is implementing the XMPP server. This is our Jabber server. So we're using it for uh, all kinds of reasons. I've used it in production before and it's a great combination of really fast, uh, supports a lot of plugins, so performant, extensible, secure as far as I can tell, and um, you know, well-maintained. All of this together is a really good reason to use this. Um, eJabberD is another popular one. It's just that writing Erlang is a bit more of a task uh, Prosody can be extended using Lua, which makes it uh, really popular for that, which means there's a ton of extensions uh, that are very useful, which you can use, and we'll talk about those. Long story short, we're going to do this in a couple of steps. First, we're going to get our Prosody software installed on the server. We're going to set up a vhost and configure Prosody. We'll also uh, enable multi-user chat rooms. Then we're going to secure the whole thing with TLS. Finally, we will set up DNS for our new XMPP server so that other people can go in with any Jabber client, uh, access our server, and chat with us. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to SSH to a brand new temporary box that I'm setting up here. First thing, of course, apt-get update. And we'll do an upgrade just to uh, get everything where it needs to be. Okay, so we are ready to get Prosody installed. apt-get install Prosody. Now, I'm using actually a very much up-to-date at this point in time version of Ubuntu. However, um, you know, if you're looking for a newer Prosody package for some kind of uh, feature or whatever, you can always do an apt cache policy and then package name. So you can see that we're installing uh, 0910. And when we go to the website, if you just go to the home page, you'll see that this is actually the most up-to-date version. Um, so as of a couple months ago, this is the stable version. So for right now, the Ubuntu repos are fine. Um, if by the time you see this, they're out of date, you may want to consider adding their PPA and uh, installing from a third-party repo. It's not part of this tutorial, though. So we'll say apt-get install porosity. 
just going to ask you to install some Lua packages as well because it's the scripting language that it uses. So at this point, we've got this bad boy installed. And system D will probably have auto started it. Yeah, so it's actually started and running. And we can see the, uh, the open ports there. The Lua is what we're, what we're talking about. IPv6 and IPv4. So for now, I'm actually just going to quickly stop the server. It's not configured or secured or anything yet, so we're just going to stop that service real quick. And now we will edit our config file. I'm going to use Vim, but you can use something like Nano uh, instead. It's totally fine if Vim is a little too crazy for you. You can see this is just a Lua file. So go ahead and edit that. The main configuration file is in etsy prosody prosody.cfg.lua. We're going to make some changes in here. So this is just uh, enabled modules. You'll see these, these two dashes are a comment for Lua. So these are basically additional code that is uh, packaged inside of a module that we then add in. We'll enable some of these uh, in a little bit. The first thing we're looking for is a virtual host. So we're going to configure a virtual host. This thing is going to run at tutoriallinux.com. So we'll actually just add that right in. So tutoriallinux.com is our host. And we're going to go ahead and enable this. And we want to protect this with SSL or TLS as it's uh, SSL is sort of the old way of saying TLS. Now the modern term is TLS, transport layer security. Our keys are going to be in a specific place. So I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, change this key and certificate path. They'll be at var lib prosody and then just the name of our server key and cert. Once you've done that, check for authentication. And we're going to change internal plane to internal hashed. Just a little extra security. It really doesn't cost much of anything. So instead of plain text authentication, we're going to hash all that. This is uh, in case uh, something goes awry on our server, renegade process, somebody breaks in, etc. We're going to add some admin users. So our users that register on our server are going to have you know, username at tutoriallinux.com. For you, this would be whatever your domain is, .com. In our case, I'm going to have a username dave at tutoriallinux.com. You can uh, comma separate additional users, but we, uh, we only need a single user right now. So this is fine for us. Next, we're going to search for muck, which is uh, multi-user chat. So just go ahead and uncomment this here. And this gives us component conference.example.com. We actually want tutoriallinux.com. So this is saying we'd like a multi-user chat room where uh, it's a little bit more like IRC, a single room, lots of users, uh, that sort of thing. So we'll add this component here. We're actually going to give it just another couple of key value settings here. The first being restricting room creation to admins only. So regular users shouldn't be able to create new chat rooms inside of this conference multi-user chat. So we'll say, we'll restrict room creation admin. This is also where you would enable specific modules, which we'll talk about later. But uh, we're just going to leave a commented out uh, thing here. We'll say modules enabled equals and then some, some collection of modules. We'll get to that a little bit later. So this, co this commented out bit of code is not going to do anything. But uh, it's just there to remind us that if we want modules that are not globally active for every single person connecting to our server, but just for our conference room here, well, then this is where we put them. Next, we're going to search for Bosch. We're going to enable Bosch. Uh, that is Jabber over HTTP. Sometimes um, 
people can have different connection problems for whatever reason, ISPs, and also this is useful for, uh, for sending files, sharing files with other users. Uh, basically, this is just the XMPP protocol over HTTP. So this basically opens up a little H XMPP over HTTP server on this server uh, to help people get around any limitations. Later, I'm going to show you, uh, this is actually part of the DNS settings that we're going to do. We're going to tell, um, we're going to create a text record in DNS to tell clients that this is here. We're going to search for register somewhere. There it is. Uh, so users are allowed to register by default. Register on the server using a client. This is also known as inline registration. Uh, sorry, in-band registration. What this just means is any client that connects to your server can request to register a new account there. In other words, you're allowing untrusted users from the internet to connect to your server and register new accounts that are, they're, they're Jabber accounts, they're XMPP accounts, but it's still an account. So if you don't want a public server, you can just disable this by commenting it out. We're going to leave it enabled because we actually want to run an open server. Anyone can come and register, although we will put some limitations on that. So because we're going to allow registration, we're actually going to look for that directive. Allow registration, that should be enough. There it is. So this is actually uh, disabled. The module is loaded, but it's actually disabled right now. So we will say true. We are going to allow registration. But, okay, min seconds is not found, that's fine. But we'll say the minimum seconds between registering new accounts to prevent, like, new account spam equals 21,600. So this is quite a few hours um, between accounts. So a malicious user can't just create thousands of accounts per day and kind of, like, DOS you that way. The alternative to allowing people to register and sort of putting some limitations on that, if you, do, if you don't want to run an open server, you can actually manually create a user from the command line, which I'll show you how to do. So for now, we're actually done. So you remember to write the file and quit. We're gonna quickly generate some certificates because we wanna protect uh, and encrypt all the traffic between the server and its users. We're gonna say prosody CTL, which is basically the command, the prosody control binary, the program that allows you to control your prosody server. And we're going to say cert generate tutoriallinux.com. So this generates a new TLS certificate. Oh, and I've got an error. I'm going to not edit this out and just leave it in here. Uh, line 190. I'm going to do this with Nano just to show those of you that use Nano what this might look like. Uh, so we're on line 90, restrict room creation. Okay. So let's search for restrict room. Uh -huh. Good old equals sign. Let's just uh, run porosity CTL status. We see it doesn't give us an error. Let's try. Let's try to generate that cert again. So porosity CTL cert generate your domain dot com. Uh, key size, if you're paranoid, you can go with 4096, so twice that size, but uh, the default size is fine for us. We'll say the internet, tutorial Linux. Yes, we are the XMPP department, common name, tutoriallinux.com. That's fine. So you can see that this is what we've actually got in our config files. So if we grab for that, you can see this is the path that we're actually using for our certificate. varlib, prosody, tutorial Linux, com, cert, and then the same for the key. So I'm going to actually show you how to create manually a user from the command line. So if you're wondering about the prosody ctl command, you can just uh, type it in. It'll give you a little help screen. You can see that you can create and delete users, start and stop the service. Uh, which you could also do with uh, systemd through the systemctl command. but And you can also uh, create and manage uh, certificates. So right now we're going to use it to add a user, prosodyctl, add user, and then username just in that email format. We'll call them 
Uh, actually, we'll call him uh, Steve at tutoriallinux.com. This will prompt us for a password. And congratulations, we've got a user. There's a way of scripting this. Prosody CTL register. So this is this doesn't require any feedback, so that you don't have to use like a shell script with expect or something weird. So if you would do this like Steve and then no at, but you would do tutorialinux.com and then the password you want right here. Obviously, shell history, etc. You may want to prefix this with a space to prevent this going into shell history with the clear text password here. But just so you know, if you need to script this, this would be the command you use. So we've got Steve at tutorialinux.com. A user has been created. We've got our certs. Now let's actually check um, Prosody. I, th I don't think it's running. Wow. System CTL status Prosody. It is inactive. So we'll just go ahead and start that service. Now if we check the status again, you can see no errors. If you had configuration errors, some kind of weird problem, this is where you'd see it in the last couple lines of the log here. So now that our server is configured and running, comes the uh, little bit confusing part, but hang in there. We're going to take a look at DNS. OK, so I'm kind of letting you into the wheelhouse here. Um, this is some DNS settings. I've deleted a couple just now that I will re-add later. But uh, this is the DNS editor for tutorialinux.com. Depending on who your registrar is, your interface might look different but this will serve us for right now. There's three kinds of records we need to add here. We need, first of all, to add an A record to point to our XMPP server, our Jabber server. So that'll be named XMPP. It'll point to our IP address. I'm gonna do this without fear because the server will not be running by the time you see this video. So this is our A record. We're just going to call the server XMPP, so this is going to be like a subdomain. It's going to be xmpp.tutorialinux.com. We're going to put in our server's IP address here. Save that record. This will take some time to propagate. So Then we're going to add two more types of records. First, we're going to add a service record, an SRV record. I recommend looking at the Wikipedia entry for this. But basically, this is for a service, like really a, a protocol, so in our case, XMPP, uh, to discover what server is responsible for dealing with it. Um, it's also used for like load balancing. You can do different things with it. Um, I would recommend reading a little bit about this. Uh, it's used a lot for different services, uh, VoIP, even Minecraft. The second type of record, DNS record, we're going to be using is a TXT record, a text record. This is really a free form type of DNS record. It's used for all kinds of different stuff. Um, this is how they, the designers just kind of left themselves some room for whatever. A lot of the time, this is just uh, some kind of value that like proves that you have control over the domain. So like uh, Google Webmaster Tools, uh, you can verify that you own a domain by adding some specific string into a text record that sort of proves that you have control over the domain. In our case, we're going to uh, just add something for XMPP. So in our DNS settings, let's start adding those three records. First, SRV. This looks complicated, but it's not so bad. This is sort of like the protocol, XMPP-client. Uh, oh, I wish this was a little bit bigger, but OK, there you go. XMPP client. Let's make this really, oh god, that's ugly. This web app is not exactly, well, there you go. Protocol. This is a TCP. Priority, highest priority is zero. This is kind of like an MX record in some ways. And then weight. Let's say we trust this one with a five. Uh, so this is actually highest is the most weight, the most trust. And the port for the client is 5222. You don't have to understand all the details of this, but you do need to enter this stuff. And then our target is that A record we created, this one up here. So this is actually XMPP 
tutoriallinux.com. Go ahead and save this. And we'll do the same thing for the server. So XMPP dash server. The protocol still TCP, priority 0 and 5. Again, we only have a single of each of these records. And then the port changes for the server, 5269. And the target will be the same, same A record. So XMPP tutoriallinux.com. We'll save that. Um, so we've got our two SRV records that we need for XMPP, the client and the server here. So we'll need one more record, which is a TXT record, which is that freeform record we were talking about. And the host will simply be, this is sort of application per uh, application specific, XMPP connect. And then the value will be XMPP client dash x Bosch, Bosch is that server, that HTTP server we turned on. And this will be using XMPP tutorial linux.com, which thanks to our A record maps over to the IP address of our server. Port 5280, and this is the URL there. So HTTP bind. Go ahead and add that last record. So you've added your three records and hopefully it took you a little bit less long than it took me. If your registrar's interface is any better, which I hope, hope, hope it is. And then that's pretty much all you need to do. Your service is actually running now on that IP. And as soon as these DNS settings uh, propagate, which can take up to a couple hours, although it's usually faster than that. At that point, you'll be able to log in and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. Okay, if you don't have Pigeon installed yet, you do it now. Um, there's lots and lots and lots of uh, XMPP or Jabber clients. Pigeon, that's just the one that pulls in the least amount of dependencies right now. So sudo apt get update we already did. Uh, this is on your home machine, not your server. So apt get install Pigeon. I've already got this installed. And then you'll want to run it. Okay, so you've launched Pigeon, and it's time to add an account. Well, we're not using AIM, we're using Jabber, XMPP. So select that protocol. And then I'm gonna show you two ways of logging in. First, we manually created that Steve user. We already gave him a password. So I'm just gonna show you how to use an existing account. Domain is tutoriallinux.com. The password we already have. So we'll say, Password, remember password, whatever. This would be the button you're checking if, you're at, if you don't have this account on the server yet. If your server is open for new registrations, then putting in an account that doesn't exist on the server yet, like steve at tutorialinux.com, and checking this box will create that account on the server. We're not going to do that right now. And you can see we're logged in. Okay. We're going to go to Manage Accounts. We're going to add a new account. This is what you would do if you were registering a new username on the server. If you recall, Dave is our admin. So we're actually going to say Dave. I don't think you have to put in a password because we're just creating this thing. So we'll just say it's still tutorialinux.com. And we're going to say create this account on the server. We should get a message asking us to create. We'll say Dave. Give that user a password. So now we're registered and we can enable that account. I'm actually gonna disable this account just so you can see. Enable account, Dave. This will ask us for the password. And you can see this changes to available. We're here, we're logged in. Let's talk about uh, rooms. By the way, so I'm now logged in as Dave. I've registered that name. That's also an admin. Right, and our config for Prosody, Dave at tutorialinux.com is an admin user. So this user can create new rooms. A couple ways to do that. The first way is buddies, add a chat. The server for our multi-user channel. I don't know if you remember this, but uh, if we check our config here, and we look for muck, 
you'll see it here. This is called conference.tutorialinux.com. This is our multi-user chat. So if you add that here, this user can add a new room. We'll call it sysadmin horde. You can authenticate people if you want. We'll auto-join that room when we connect. Let's add this room. So now you can see we've actually added a little chat room called sysadmin horde. And we're the only person in here. There's a couple other ways to get to a room, and I'm going to show you both of them. The first is room list. Once you connect to a server, this account, just paste in conference tutorialinux.com and find rooms that it contains. So now you see there's a room here. We can also add a chat, so we could add a new room. The third way is if you go to Tools, Plugins, you want to go ahead and select XMPP Service Discovery. Make sure that's checked, and then close it. This will give you the option at the bottom of your Tools menu, XMPP Service Discovery. You can click on that and just hit Browse, and you can just enter the entire server. You don't have to enter conference.tutorialinux.com and then just find any services that it's offering. So if you don't know about conference.tutorialinux.com because you haven't read like the server config file, this is one way to go ahead and discover what's on the server, what kind of rooms, what kind of conference rooms, etc. So those are the three ways to connect. Finally, I'd like to talk about modules. If you go to modules.prosity.im, you'll see uh, something like 200, 223 modules that you can use to expand uh, and add functionality to your server. You can get the whole list here. Some uh, package managers, so some like in the Ubuntu repositories, you'll see a Prosody modules, I think, package. I don't really recommend installing those. They don't have all these modules. They're not particularly up to date. Um, and it's fairly easy to install them all. So what you can actually do is clone a mod clone all of these modules using Mercurial, which is kind of like Git. It's a version control system. But for now, just know that there are all these modules you can use. A couple that I would recommend if you're running a server require OTR. So this is a stable thing. It's compatible even with the unstable newest version. Basically, you add this to the virtual host in your uh, your Prosody config file, and to your modules enabled item, you simply add require underscore OTR. You need this module installed to do this. But what this is, is it requires Pigeon's OTR, the off-the-record messaging functionality, which is just an extra layer of security and encryption. It uses a clever like encryption rack, uh, ratcheting method to have like unique keys per message, et cetera, et cetera. It's really clever, written by some really, really clever folks. And it's nice to do this. Um, OTR has a, well, sort of a bug by design, which is that the first message that you send is not encrypted. So that's kind of an issue, and this fixes that. This will just squelch that first message and require that everything is uh, working. So this is allowing encrypted chat on your server. The place where you would do that in the admin file is here, right? So you would actually just uncomment this, delete these two uh, dashes, and then add that module name here. Again, you need that module actually installed. A couple of the other uh, modules I recommend. Limit uh, authentication attempts, mod limit auth. So this is actually just a authentication throttling thing so people can't just hammer your server with attempted logins. Muck, ban IPs. One of the problems with XMPP is that uh, you've got like this XMPP specific ID. It's not like um, IRC where you can see what a person's IP is and just IP ban them. This is one way of mapping those IDs to IP addresses and then banning those IPs. So you have the same IP ban capability that you've got in uh, something like IRC. Quite useful if you've got abusive users and you've got an open uh, XMPP or Jabber server. So have a look through these, modules.prosody.im, see what you like, play around, and test some stuff before you open your server up to everyone and tell people uh, where it is. So that's about it. We've got a beautiful server, a big chat lobby, our first one, an idea of how the 
configuration works for Prosody. An idea of how to set up Pigeon and configure it to connect to an XMPP server. And that should pretty much uh, get you started. So have fun with this. Feel free, if you, if you set up a server, uh, put the information in the chat and see if anybody shows up. I will think about adding one of these for Tutorial Linux in general. It might be fun just to have a place for everyone to hang out uh, and trade encrypted messages with each other, uh, learn a little bit more about tech. So thanks again for watching, guys. If this is helpful, remember to subscribe, share this. I'll see you uh, in the next project.